Now to read the fine print under this chart called the Cosmic Clock. The Formula of the Locked Potentials Time marks the periods between events. Man divides his time by the periodicities of his planet's revolution around the sun and subdivides it by its rotation upon its axis. These periods are again divided to act as man's necessary time dimensions. The Universal One divides his time by the periodicities of his inhalation and exhalation, which together make one universal constant of energy, and subdivides it into four exactly equal unit constants of energy. These periodicities and tonal and midtonal subdivisions measure the dimensions of his ideal in the illusion of form, space, time, sex, temperature, and other periodicities. Energy accumulates during general active inhalation by rising potentials and is dissipated during the radioactive exhalation by lowering potential. The periodicities of inhalation and exhalation in all mass are absolute. Now more about this clock. The numerals of this formula are the hours of the cosmic clock. They are in the relative positions of the atoms of the elements and in the order of their respective varying dimensions. The seconds of the cosmic clock are the corpuscles or light units which make up the atom's structure. The hands of the clock are the indicating line of charging and discharging potential. The mainspring is the 10 octave cycle. Five of these octaves are decelerating time dimension, transformed by accumulation into power, and the other five octaves are power dimension, release into accelerating time. The winding of the clock is the sublime five octave inhalation, and its unwinding is its five octave exhalation. The cosmic pendulum in its swinging ticks off the varying dimensions of all motion forever and forever with unfailing accuracy, but never does it depart from this simple formula. One by one, the realtor will take up and analyze the 18 dimensions of the effects of motion. Neither temperature, nor valence, nor orbit, nor color, nor ionization, nor electric force, nor magnetic force, nor any effect of chemistry known to man are still to become known. None of these, nor others herein unnamed, excepting mass and tone, can extend beyond this simple formula. It is met that this simple formula of vast import should have a name so that it may be referred to in proper terminology. The formula of locked potentials shall be the name by which this formula shall be hereafter known. Next chapter, Universal Oneness. Now must the simplest but the greatest of all laws of the universe be written down. Everything that is, is of everything else that is. Nothing is of itself alone. All created things are indissolubly united. This is the law of the entire substance of divine mind. This is the law of the souls of things. This is the law of love. It is the law of the oneness of the universe. All that is, is one. There are not two interdependently separate things in the entire universe. Individuality is non-existent. Individuality is but an appearance of separability and divisibility in a universe which is non-separable and non-divisible. No one can say, I alone am I. If one should say, I am I, he must say also to all men and all created things, I am thou, and thou art also I. The oneness of the universe is the sublimely simple one, spiritual substance of divine mind. The one substance of mind is a living substance of the one living thinking being, of which all things in this universe are a part 
and to which they are indissolubly united. Light is that which makes of the one substance a living substance. Light is the life principle of mind. Light is the creating force of the universe. Light is all that is. Light is the living God. God is manifested in light. Light is the Holy Spirit, God, Father, Mother, Nature, Man, the oak, the rolling hills, the mountain chains, the fountain, the pounding sea, and the sands of the sea, the babbling brook, the red apple hanging on the tree, the autumn haze, the storm, the stars in the heavens, the blade of grass, and the kindly dew on the opening rose. All creating things are dependent upon light to hold them together in the appearance of individually separate things. As light is the substance of all things, and all things are dependent on light, all things are therefore interdependent. All are continuously interchanging by reproduction throughout the universe in continuity. No one created thing has time, nor place, nor position in ideal. The ideal of all creating things is universal. It is omnipresent as ideal throughout the entirety of mind, but the counterpart of ideal in all creating things is sequential in time and place. The counterpart of ideal is the reproduced ideal. The reproduced ideal is a part of the basic ideal. This is a universe of reproduction. Production and reproduction of ideal, of thinking mind, is the sole result of thinking and the sole reason for thinking. Ideal and reproduction of ideal are universal in sequence as states of motion are universal in sequence. Idea and reproduction of idea are multiplied as appearances in motion and opposition of which the pulsations of thinking mind are the cause. There is no other cause. There is no other motion. Each idea and each reproduced counterpart of idea has but the appearance of time and place and position from which it does not appear to depart. Still it is of the universe. Still it is of all the universe a part. The rose blooming in my garden is of Arcturus a part as of it as it is of you and me. The universe sways to the swaying of the rose in my garden. Every particle of matter in this universe has its own magnetic pole through which it is connected with the magne magnetic pole of each other particle of matter in the universe and through which each particle is affected by the ever-changing condition of every other particle in the universe. This is a universe of equilibrium in motion, the continuity of which could not be maintained except through the interdependence of all apparently separated units. Everything that is is of everything else that is. Nothing is of itself alone. All created things are indissolubly united. All is God, and God is all. God is light. Light is all. Creation is the sublime ideal of the sublime being. The sublime is always simple. With creation, simplicity seems to end and complexity to begin. Complexity belongs to creating things. Man's outer mind is a heavy and complex mind. It knows not the sublimity of simplicity. The inner mind of man is attuned to the ecstatic meter of divine thinking. The inner mind of man knows the sublimity of deific simplicity. The inner mind of man knows light. Everything that is is of everything else that is. Nothing is of itself alone.